Good morning, everybody, and welcome to our Friday night vigil. Seems like it has been ages that we had night vigil. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, as we gather here before this vigil, we humbly come before you. We are here to seek your divine presence, to seek your guidance. We ask, Lord, that you will open our hearts and minds to your word so that this word will enlighten us and encourage us. Our Lord and our God, we acknowledge the challenges that we face in the world all around us. Even now, our Lord and our God, we want to remember those in New Jersey, New York areas and parts of Philadelphia who are experiencing aftershocks of the earthquake this morning. Our Lord and our God, Father, be with them, Lord Father. Thank you for keeping them safe. Father, we are reminded to stand firm in your truth and your promises that a thousand will fall at our side, ten thousand at our right hand. It will not come near us. With our eyes, we will live to see the reward of the wicked. So, Lord, we ask that you grant us the strength and perseverance to remain steadfast in our convictions and unwavering in our commitment to you. We will continue to follow you, Lord. We ask that you bring transformation to our hearts, our minds, and our lives through the power of your word. May it renew our spirits, shape our character, and mold us into instruments of your love and mercy. Empower us, Lord, that everything you teach us, that we will live out these teachings and share your truth with others. We offer this prayer knowing that you will hear us and you will answer accordingly. May... This time that we are spending in your presence be a time of enlightenment, encouragement, that it draw us closer to you and deepen our relationship with you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Um, I've had people ask me, SL, how do we pick our topics for ministrations, for our topics in general? And I say the Holy Spirit guides us. And... Um, this afternoon, the Holy Spirit said to me, he said, um, for the vigil, I want to teach you about testing. And I thought, testing, test, 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 test. Which one is this test again? And he says, we are going into a season of testing. Amen. And I was a bit taken aback. Because, you know, this is our month of divine approval. And so I thought, ah, I thought we have been approved. <laughs> but here we are. And so our message today is titled, Seasons of Testing, Overcomers. Overcomers. And what are we looking at? God is telling us that life is full of seasons of testing and Jesus has given us the pattern of how to overcome tests every day. And the thing about it is every test, if you pass it, could be the preparation for promotion. But you have to pass it. I hope you are aware. I hope you're aware you have to pass the test. Amen. Does anyone know what a mothball is? In my part of the world, it's popularly called camphor. Camphor, yes. Camphor, yeah. Mothballs. I know that in today's world, not many people understand mothballs. Many of us are grandmothers. Our grandmothers had a special perfume. Yes? If you went to your grandmother's home, you would smell that perfume. All they needed to do was bring a suitcase out from underneath the bed. Open the cupboard. You will smell the perfume. It's amazing how I associated the smell with my grandmothers. One lived in Lagos and one lived in Edo State. 
But yet, that smell. For a long time, I didn't know what the smell was. All I remember seeing were these little white balls. Little white balls. In their cupboard, in the drawers. And if you opened any of their suitcases, as they called them in those days, portmanteau, or their trunks, you would see those little white balls in them. So I often associated mothballs with the old, with the old. And of course, recently, I would find, especially in the UK, my, my son's vests, especially, little holes. And I realized that it was moths. I would have assumed that over the years, they would have mothballs that were perfumed. <laughs> and I remember going through shops in London, going through shops in America, different states. They actually have those mothballs that are no longer white, but are different colors. But I assure you, they still smell the same. And so you may open my cupboards and you might just smell that grandmother smell because there are mothballs there. Mothballs had nothing to do with my grandparents or my grandmothers. That smell. That smell. So you see how easy it is for us to associate something with something else that is completely, has nothing to do with it. I've learned from that that my, percep my perception may not be valid. It may be valid, but it may not be valid. And what does all of this have to do with our message this evening? It all has to do with tests. What is a test? A test is a series of questions, tasks, exercises that measure knowledge, skills, capacity, Examination, evaluation. What is a trial? An examination to try something, to prove something. So you hear test of faith, patience, test of stamina. You test things through suffering and temptations. These are all words that we are familiar with, especially as Christians, yes? Or we hear of obstacle. What's an obstacle? An obstacle is something that impedes progress. Something that impedes achievement. An obstacle to try to block, to hold back. That's an obstacle. And then you also know that there's an obstacle course. What's an obstacle course? An obstacle course is a training course filled with hurdles, fences, walls, ditches. So from this, we can see that tests, testing, they have a purpose. There's a purpose. Could be positive, it can be negative. I hope you are following me this morning. James 1.3 tells us, knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. James 1.12, blessed is a man that endureth temptation, for when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord hath promised to them that love him. Let's look at 13. Let no man say, when he is tempted, I'm tempted of God, for God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempteth he any man. Amen. Amen. 
I want you to know that passing through tests is part of being human. Life is full of tests. Life is full of tests. We have to listen to this ministration very, very carefully this morning. Yes, testing often determines one's stamina. It lets you know where you are. You know, if you are going through a trial in your life, I hope you know that it does not guarantee that there's a future blessing. Don't ever assume because you are going through a trial, that at the end of that trial, you will be blessed. Hmm, Esther, what do you mean by, what do you mean by that? Do you know that the blessing of a test is only found in passing? If you don't pass it, you're not blessed. Because if you pass the test, it means that you have endured the trial. If you don't pass, you didn't endure it all. And let me be honest with you today. Going through a test that you have not sat for. You hear somebody is going through challenges in her marriage. What is your business? Pray for them and move on. Why do you need to have an opinion? Someone is going through a divorce. Someone is going through financial problems. Somebody was caught cheating. Somebody was caught stealing. Someone left their spouse. Somebody is pregnant out of wedlock. What is your business? Nobody should be mocked. Though, because nobody deserves to be mocked. And let me say this. It is human nature eh, to be proud in order to succeed and have advantage over the next person. Because it seems like you did it better. But it's not God's nature. God wants us to be humble at all times. Do you know to pass a test, you have to be broken. To pass through that test, you must be broken. Who works hard here? I work very hard. Very, very hard. But you know something? A lot of us work very hard. Very, very hard. But you know, anything good in you comes from God. So you cannot be proud of anything good in you because it has come, everything has come from God. If you are not alive, how will you do what you are doing? If it's not provide for you, how will you do what you are doing? And the greater God's plan for a person the greater the brokenness he requires from that person. He wants you to know that you are nothing. But in him, you are everything. And you need to understand that brokenness is God's way of making our lives beautiful. Because people will look at you and say, despite all, this person is still standing. If God calls you for a great work, be prepared to experience deeper brokenness. First Corinthians 4, 7. For who maketh thee to differ from another? And what hast thou that thou didst not receive? Now, if thou didst receive it, why dost thou glory as if thou hast not received it? What is it that you have 
that God did not give you. What is it? James 1, let's read James 1, 3 to 13. For you know that the testing of your faith produces steadfastness. And let steadfastness have its full effect, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking in nothing. If any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask God, who gives generously to all without reproach, and it will be given him. But let him ask in faith with no doubt him, for the one who doubts is like the wave of the sea that is driven and tossed by the wind. For that person must not suppose that he will receive anything from the Lord. He is a double-minded man, unstable in all his ways. Let the lowly brother boast in his exaltation and the rich in his humiliation, because like a flower of the grass, he will pass away. For the sun rises with his scorching heat and withers the grass. Its flower falls and its beauty perishes. So also will the rich man fade away in the midst of his pursuits. Blessed is the man who remains steadfast under trial. For when he has stood the test, he will receive the crown of life, which God has promised to those who love him. Let no one say when he is tempted, I'm being tempted by God. For God cannot be tempted with evil and he himself tempts no one. You know, the other day in um, Bible study, a sister had said, perhaps one can be tempted, tested by your situation. No. These are your desires. Let's look at something today. Let's look at something today. Let's look at a test. Let's look at a test. Let's look at the life of Jesus. Jesus was God with us. Let's switch this off, this device off. Amen. Jesus, what's his name? Emmanuel. God is with us. Do you get it? So we see God coming down from heaven to be with us. Amen. The time had come to test and prove Jesus. I want you to look at your life vis-a-vis -vis the life of Christ this evening or this morning. So Jesus had to walk that lonesome valley of the season of testing. And we have great news. We know that Jesus is the incarnate son of God, yes? His role, his purpose on earth was to reveal God's plan, God's purpose, God's word, and the intentions of God to the whole world. With this man's coming, history will have its paradigm shift. Okay? Now, before Jesus came, we had John the Baptist. John the Baptist had been announcing, there is a greater than that is coming. Prepare ye the way. Prepare. Be ready, be ready, be ready, be ready, be ready. Everything was not, it was, nothing was hidden. Nothing was hidden. John said the son of God was going to come. Jesus was going to come to invade the enemy's territory and all hell will be put on notice. And all hell was put on notice. Amen. Because we know for one that there was more angelic activity heralding the announcement birth of Jesus than anywhere else in the Bible. Jesus' testing will invade the wilderness, the kingdoms of the world, and the church with the light of the truth. That was what Jesus was going to bring. Jesus would be what I call T and P, tried and proven. Amen? Tried and proven. Why? To show the devil to show the demons, to show unbelievers and the whole world that he is both real and he's genuine. That is what a test does. A test shows that something is the real thing. Beloved, life is full of tests. So, And as I said earlier, if you are going through a trial in life, it does not guarantee 
that there is a future blessing. The blessing of a test is only found in passing the test. It means if you pass the test, you have endured the trial. So, we see Jesus. Jesus was meant to come and invade the satanic territories of this world. That's what he came to do. So let's go back to the beginning. Let's go back to the beginning. I hope you are following this morning. I'm not confusing anybody. Are we all on the same page? And can we like this ministration so more people can watch it, can land on more people's timelines? Amen. Amen. God bless you as you do so. God bless you as you like this ministration. So, God had all authority. Yeah? He had all authority. Creator of heaven and earth. Created the world. Six days rested. In love, God gave the keys of authority to Adam and Eve. Are we in agreement on that? They had a test. And what did they do? They failed. They faced their test and failed, failed woefully. Adam and Eve failed woefully. The first couple sold their test of authority into the enemy's hand. And what was even worse was they now blamed God for failing the test. Do you know that? <laughs> you see, every time you fail something, you fail in something, and you give a reason for your failure, you are blaming God. You are doing exactly what Adam had. The reason it happened, the reason this happened to me is because of that. No. Mm -mm. Look at it now. Look at things that you have done and failed. Ask yourself, why did you fail? Did somebody make you fail? When I make wrong choices, it's because I made the wrong choice now. The decision I took. Perhaps I didn't think through what I was doing, but it's all on me. It shouldn't be on anyone else. They blamed God for failing the test. Poor attitude. And of course, we know that things went from bad to worse after that. And so God knew. So Jesus came to forcefully take the keys to the kingdom and place them where they rightfully belonged on the belt of the Son of God. So we see Jesus came to submit to the testing and prove that he is God. Tried and proven, T and P. Luke 4, 1. Let's start. And Jesus, being full of the Holy Ghost, returned from Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness, being 40 days tempted of the devil. And in those days he did, not, he did eat nothing. And when they were ended, he afterward hungered. So we see Satan ready to throw all that he has at God's Son. The test was going to be long and hard. Jesus will face a very hostile scene in the desert. Will face the enemy and the wild destructive forces that Satan has to throw at him. Everything, flesh, devil, and world. Is that not how the devil attacks us? Are those not the tests we face? Our flesh, the devil, and the world.
There will be a season of testing. And after the season, there come the words. Let me say something to you. Do you know the condition of Satan right now? Who knows the condition of Satan right now? Who knows the condition of Satan? I need you to understand the foe that you are fighting. Who knows the condition of Satan? I hope you know that you cannot refer to Satan as being alive and well. Do you know that? There was a time Satan was alive and well. But after Jesus dealt with him, I tell you that Satan is mortally wounded. Maybe that's why he likes to send cancer because I know that Satan has terminal cancer. Why do I say he has terminal cancer? His days are numbered. He knows what the end is going to be like. Hallelujah. That is why he's fighting tooth and nail. Because his days are numbered. Be assured, all the kingdom of the world, they will crumble and collapse one day. You know that. You see, seasons of testing, they often come when you have been knocked down and you are weak. What is the test? You know what the test is? The test typically comes in a two-letter word, if. If. One of the largest small words in the Bible. If. Luke 4, 3. And the devil said unto him, If thou be the Son of God, command this stone that it be made bread. Every time he speaks, he tries to question the authority of God. What did he say to Adam and Eve? Did. Did God say? The enemy tests us with self doubt. He's trying to ask, are you going to question the call? Are you going to question the plan of God for your life? The call of God for your life? Are you going to question the purpose of God for your life? I say to you, the test always comes in weakness. Look at yourselves now. The time you fell, you were hungry. You were tired. You are lonely. You are feeling sentimental. Yes or no? We spoke about obstacle course earlier. Will you allow the test to become an obstacle course? So how do we counter the test? Jesus knew how to counter the test. How do we counter the test? You use the word. I want you to declare the word is working mightily through me. 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 Many of you, do you know why you are strengthened to participate in 5 a.m. declarations? Remember when we only used to speak the word? Remember, there was a time. Word non-stop, word non-stop, word non-stop, word non-stop. That word strengthened also. Make us wake up in the morning. Make us be focused. The word of God does the work of God. The word of God, it does the work of God. If we pass the test, we must know and stand 
on the word of God. If you're anemic in the word, you will be anemic in the work. Simple. Matthew twenty two twenty nine. 29, Jesus answered and said unto them, you do err, not knowing the scriptures, nor the power of God. So many things we need to learn. You know things that Jesus never did. And we must learn this too. Number one, Jesus did not enter into any theological discussion with anybody. He didn't. Jesus did not debate with anybody. See, some of you, eh? You know that there are a lot of demons, small, small demons on social media. Are you aware? Small, small demons using foolish people. You see, when someone wants to debate with you on scripture, hmm? Know that the devil is crouching at your door. Don't ever debate with anyone concerning the word of God. Don't. We see them now. We see them. And some people foolishly are following them. You know, there are times when certain things, although they don't pass on my timeline any longer, and then I look and I see some people that follow on Instagram, there. Jesus used and uses the weapon of the sharp edged word, that sharp edged sword, that's the word. That's what he did. He just spoke the word. Luke 4, 4 tells us, and Jesus answered him, saying, it is written that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. That's all. He didn't answer anything else. He didn't need to prove anything. You have to be so careful. The test of the ego. The test of the ego. You don't have to explain anything. Always remember, Satan has terminal cancer. He's going to die. Another thing I need you to know that seasons of test, they rarely come by one thing. They are never just alone. Seasons of test often come in series of dark, hard, difficult times. Luke 4, 5, And the devil taking him up into a high mountain showed unto him, all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. And the devil said unto him, all this power will I give thee and the glory of them, for that is delivered unto me and to whomsoever I will give it. You see, satanic goals are often distorted and invalid perceptions of mistruths. I've learned that, you know, because something is popular does not mean it is right. Because you see signs, wonders, and things in a place does not mean it is of God. Does not mean because something seems to be winning that God is there. Big. They are blessed in that place. You know something? Satan cannot give what does not belong to him. The devil has no title deed to any property. Satan subtracts and Satan divides. Satan has nothing to give. He is a taker. Satan can never create. Only God has the power of procreation. The devil cannot make anything. He is a destroyer. 
I read where the devil challenged God that he could make a man. And they say he stooped to the earth. God said, wait a minute. That earth is mine now. You can't make something out of what does not belong to you. Devils can't make something out of nothing. Here we go again. If. Let's look at Luke 4, 7. If thou therefore will worship me, all shall be thine. <laughs> Beloved, there is power in God's word. There's power. I want you to know it and I want you to use it often. Often. Luke 4, 8. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Get thee behind me, Satan. For it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. Who remembers the seven sons of Seva? They knew mentally, but they do not know spiritually. Acts 19, 14. Acts 19, 14. And there were seven sons of one Sceva, a Jew, and chief of the priests, which did so. And the evil spirit answered and said, Jesus I know, and Paul I know, but who are ye? And the man in whom the evil spirit was leaped on them and overcame them and prevailed against them, so that they fled out of the house naked and wounded. And then there was even yet another test, a third test for Jesus. I told you, the test won't come one. No. If, again, nothing new. Nothing new. Luke 4, 9. And he brought him to Jerusalem and set him on a pinnacle of the temple and said unto him, If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down from hence. If Jesus had jumped, he would have died. Satan knows God's word, but he will always take the word of God out of context and will always come to an invalid distorted conclusion. That's why when you see some of these people talking on social media about the word of God, it always comes out as rubbish. It's the devil that is behind them. Jesus uses the word powerfully. Luke 4.10 For it is written, he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee, and in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest at any time thou dash thy foot against the stone. And Jesus answering said unto him, it is said, thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. You know, every single one of us here, if somebody wants to find out something bad about us, will they find it out? Yes. Yes. They will. Because nobody is perfect. Something you may have done, something you may have said, could have been yesterday, could have been years ago. And they can use it against you. It's all part of this distorting. You can twist things. The seasons of testing, they come and they go. But you have to be ready because evil will be back. It doesn't stop. It doesn't stop. Luke 4.13 And when the devil had ended all the temptation, he departed from him for a season. Be ready. Evil will be back and the test will be the lust of the flesh the lust of the eye and the pride of life first john 2 16 for all that is in the world the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the father but it is of the world you are in this world now acts 7 55 but he being full of the holy ghost looked up steadfastly into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing on the right hand of God. Revelation 1.18 I am he that liveth and was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. 
and I have the keys of hell and death. Let us pray. John 16, 33 tells us, These things I have spoken to you, that in me you may have peace in the world, you may have tribulation, but be of good joy, overcome the world. Let's just thank God this morning. Let's praise him for overcoming the world. Say, Lord, let this penetrate my heart and encourage my faith. That greater is he that is in me than he that is in this world. Let's thank God. Let's just thank God that God has overcome the world. And so you are more than an overcomer in Christ who loved you. Father, we thank you. We thank you that no matter the challenges that we are facing, that we will face, Lord, Father, that you have our back and we will overcome in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. First Peter 4, 12. Dear friends, do not be surprised at the painful trial you are suffering as though something very strange were happening to you. I want you to pray this morning. Ask God to remind you that trials are to be expected. Ask him, Lord, help me to keep my reactions under control. Help me know that you are the one that is in control. It really doesn't matter what is happening. Because even though I do not know it, you knew it, you've seen it, and you are in it with me. Thank you that I know that whatever it is I'm going through is within your will in the mighty name of Jesus. Let's look at 2 Timothy 3, verses 12 to 13. Everyone who wants to live a godly life in union with Christ Jesus will be persecuted and evil persons and imposters will keep on going from bad to worse, deceiving others and being deceived themselves. Ask God to open your eyes today to see persecution as a blessing and a reminder of your union with Jesus, that Jesus went through it and he overcame so that you will go through it and you will overcome too in the mighty name of Jesus. <clears throat> James 1, 2 to 4. Consider it all joy, my brethren, when you encounter various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces endurance and let endurance have its perfect result so that you may be perfect and complete, lacking in nothing. Let us ask God this morning to give us great strength. Father, for all the tests and trials we go through, that we will endure in a way that is refining, a way that is transforming, a way that is done simply for the glory of God in the mighty name of Jesus. You see, James, he reminds us, consider it all joy when you face any trial. Consider it all joy in the mighty name of Jesus. I am, let's look at Romans 8. Romans 8. Romans 8, verse 18. I consider that our present sufferings are not worth comparing with the glory that will be revealed in us. <laughs> Ask God this morning to encourage you with reminders that whatever it is we are going through here on earth, is nothing compared to the glory of the Son that will be revealed to us when we make it into heaven. Say, Lord, I am expectant. Well, I know I'm not going to die now, but I know a day is coming when all this trouble that I'm seeing here on earth will be no more. I will be in glory with you in the mighty name of Jesus. James 1, 12. Blessed is the man who perseveres under trial. For once he has been approved, he will receive the crown of life which the Lord has promised to those who love him. Let's thank God that even in this month of divine approval, that whatever trial it is you are going through, whatever testing it is you are going through, that God should encourage you during the trial, give you strength to persevere. You are going to get through this in the mighty name of Jesus. And indeed, at the end of the day, all of us will receive that crown of life. In Jesus' name, 1 Peter 1, 6. In all this, you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while you may have suffered, you may have to suffer grief in all kinds of trials. Let's pray, O oh Lord, during my trials and hardships. Father, please encourage me with joy in my inheritance that will never spoil or never fade, that I have something to look forward to that I have a goodly heritage in you, Lord, that a day will come when I will look back 
and it will all be smiles and glory in the mighty name of Jesus. Romans 8, 28. And we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. Ask God this morning to give you his wise perspective. Say, Lord, help me to see you working out your good purpose in my life. There are some things that I'm going through right now that make no sense, that I want to react in a certain way, but you have told me not to do so. Thank you, Lord, for giving me your perspective on things, Father, and let me be obedient to walk in the way that you have asked me to go in the mighty name of Jesus. James 1.5, but if any one of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God who gives to all generously and without reproach and to be given to you. So let's begin to ask God for wisdom this morning. Ask him wisdom, understanding, and his perspective during whatever trial it is that you are going through. Say, Lord, please show me how to see my circumstances through your eyes in the mighty name of Jesus. 1 Corinthians 10, verse 13. No temptation has overtaken you except that which is common to mankind. And God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. When you are tempted, he will also provide a way out so you can endure it. Beloved, hmm, a trouble is coming. A trouble is coming. Let's just thank God for his faithfulness to provide a way out when that trouble comes. Ask God this evening or this morning, well, whatever it is where you are, to give you great faith, to keep God on the throne of your life, regardless of whatever your circumstances are, regardless of whatever it is you are going through, that God remain on the throne. Let me continue to see you on the throne. Let me continue to see and know that you are God and that everything that I'm going through, you are aware of. Nothing has caught you by surprise in the mighty name of Jesus. Psalm 55 Verse 22, cast your cares on the Lord and he will sustain you. He will never let the righteous be shaken. Just thank God for his promise to sustain us as we cast our cares on him. So make sure, please don't be arrogant and not cast your cares on him. He's telling you, come unto me all who labor and are heavy laden and I'll give you rest. So cast your cares onto Jesus today. Cast your cares unto him. Romans 12, 12. Be joyful in hope. Be patient in affliction. And faithful in prayer. Hmm. Talk to God this morning. That is only by his power that we can have joy, patience, and faith in the moment. Ask God to remind you that he is close to those who suffer. So if you're going through something right now, you're in any form of pain, suffering, say, Lord, I know you are close to me. Ask God to meet you in your prayers in the mighty name of Jesus. Let us just thank God because he has promised that the testing of our faith produces perseverance and steadfastness, which in time will bring forth beautiful Christ-like characters that God so desires in all of his children. But many of us, we personally seek to avoid because we are angry during times of bitter struggle. Tell God to please, Lord, help me to embrace any trial. You are the one that you see it fit. Whatever it is I go through, whatever has entered my life, whether through you, through being in the world, or through what I have put myself in, help me to embrace those trials because you are in control. Help me, Lord, talk to God this morning to help you 
Look at the difficulties that engulf you with his eyes. Ask God to give you the perspective of eternity. That whatever problems that you are called up to face, that you count them all joy. When you are confronted by these various trials and testing, knowing that your faith is producing godly, that godly fruit of patience in the mighty name of Jesus. Ask God to help you use these times of testing as an opportunity to grow in grace, to use the times of testing as a springboard to develop a deeper and more secure relationship with him in the mighty name of Jesus. And yes, God knows it's not always easy for us to align our minds with the mind of Christ. He knows that it is often very hard for us to see trials in a positive light. It is hard for us to embrace the various testings we have to go through. It's difficult for us to see them as things that should be prized. And yet, the word of God tells us that life's difficulties, they sharpen our faith. Life's difficulties develop our trust in the Lord. And those are the things that are more precious to God than much fine gold. So let us ask God this morning to give us a heart that understands. A heart that chooses to look at these tests and trials from his perspective. So that our testing, the testing of our faith will bring forth righteous fruit of patience and grace. Let us just thank God for being with us. He is an awesome God. He is a kind father. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, amen. Beloved, I will say to you, no matter what it is you are going through today, be encouraged. God is in control. He has never stopped being in control. Whatever it is you are going through, he knows it, he is aware of it. And at the end of the day, it will all be to his glory and to your benefit in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Faithful Father, we just want to thank you for this time in your presence this morning. Father, thank you for hearing our prayers. Father, thank you for feeding us with your word. Father, thank you for encouraging us as we have gathered together. So Lord, we ask that you take our lives, use us to love and to serve you, all people in the power of your spirit and in the name of your son and our savior, Jesus Christ. We have been created by your power, redeemed by your love and strengthened by your spirit. Father, we give ourselves to you in service. May we love you and love others with all our hearts through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Remain lifted in God's presence always. Amen.